hands were opened, and the Spirit descended upon him like a dove, and the voice of the Father thundered, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Good evening, everybody. Very welcome to Mass today on the feast of the baptism of our Lord. So we go 30 years now into our Lord's life from the crib scene, and um, Jesus is baptized by none other, of course, than the man himself, John the Baptist. And on that occasion, if you remember, the Holy Spirit came down on him in the form of a dove. And a voice from heaven was heard, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And maybe the Lord should be able to say that to all of us. This is my beloved Son, this is my beloved daughter, in whom I am well pleased. But sometimes maybe he's not pleased with us and we fall by the wayside. So to prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. solemnly declared him your beloved son. Grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. 
I have endowed him with my spirit, that he may bring true justice to the nations. He does not cry out or shout aloud, or make his voice heard in the streets. He does not break the crushed reed, nor quench the wavering flame. Faithfully, he brings true justice. He will neither waver nor be crushed until true justice is established on earth, for the islands are waiting for his law. I, the Lord, have called you to serve the cause of right. I have taken you by the hand and formed you. I have appointed you as covenant of the people and light of the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to free captives from prison, and those who live in darkness from the dungeon. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Oh, give the Lord, you sons of God, give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord the glory of his name. Adore the Lord in his holy court. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The Lord's voice resounding on the waters, the Lord in the immensity of waters, the voice of the Lord full of power, the voice of the Lord full of splendor, the Lord will bless his people with peace. The God of glory thunders, in his temple they all cry, glory, the Lord sat enthroned over the flood, the Lord sits as king forever. The Lord will bless his people with peace. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. The truth I have now come to realise, he said, is that God does not have favourites, but that anybody of any nationality who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to him. It is true, God sent his word to the people of Israel, and it was to them that the good news of peace was brought by Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ is Lord of all men. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth and how he began in Galilee, after John had been preaching baptism. God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, and because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The heavens opened and the Father's voice resounded. This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to him. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. A feeling of expectancy had grown among the people who were beginning to think that John might be the Christ. So John declared before them all, I baptize you with water, but someone is coming, someone who is more powerful than I am, and I am not fit to undo the strap of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now when all the people had been baptised, and while Jesus after his own baptism was at prayer, heaven opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily shape like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved, my favour rests on you. The Gospel of the Lord. It seems to me that however far people have distanced themselves from the church, they'll always come for the baptism of their children. It may be for reasons which fall short of the ideal, such as strong hints from parents or grandparents, or maybe to secure a place in the Catholic school. I've even heard parents say, I think it's time we got the baby done. However, I think if we all looked into our consciences, 
Could any of us say, hand on heart, that our motives for doing anything important are always that pure, or entirely pure? The first reading today says, the, he does not break the crushed reed, nor quench the wavering flame. He not, does not break the crushed reed or quench the wavering flame. Could that apply to parents who uh, approach the church for baptism, I wonder? There are times when our faith is tested, especially in, during this pandemic, but also the church itself, for people who have distanced themselves a bit from it, the church itself sometimes might appear cold and impersonal. In today's reading, referring also to baptism, I think, um, from Isaiah, it says, I have taken you by the hand and formed you. Perhaps as a Catholic communion, we meet, need to take, as it were, more people by the hand and encourage them in the faith. That's what it's about. It's not about castigating themselves because they have, they're lapsed or they've fallen away. But we need to encourage them and share our faith with them and let them see the joy that your faith brings you. That's what evangelization is about. This big word that we're always talking about, we do nothing about. It's about sharing your faith. It's about encouraging those who have weak faith. So we should take more people by the hand. And I think the synodal process which we have embarked on is really suggestion, suggesting that we become that type of church, that we're walking together. As the man said once, don't walk in front of me, I may not follow you. Don't walk behind me, I may not lead either. Walk beside me and be my friend. That's what it's about. And I'm not saying I'm any better than you, or you're any better than me, or you're any worse than me. But we're walking together and we're helping one another. And I think that would really help parents who are bringing their children for baptism, maybe for sort of flimsy reasons, but they're there and that's the important thing. Having said that, I don't think the baptism of children should be taken lightly either where commitment to the church is weak. Baptism is primarily an entry into the church where our faith is nourished and strengthened. If children are not exposed to Sunday Mass, then Mass in the school, or even there are re lessons, will be mostly academic. That's not what it's about. You know, comparative religion is one thing, but that's not what we're really on about. We're really on about you and me and the children, particularly, becoming believers. That's what we want. We don't want them to just sail through school and just study comparative religions. That's a waste of time. Attending Sunday Mass is very much part and parcel of being a Catholic Christian. The Catholic ethos of the school will only be as good as the ecclesial faith of the school community. So you have two types of faith. You have your personal faith, and then you're supposed to have your ecclesial faith. That means faith in the church which Jesus founded. You hear people saying, I believe in God, but I don't believe in the church. Well, they've got it wrong because Christ founded a church so that we could walk together, so that we could help each other, so that we could be that divine human partnership which he wants us to be, so we walk together in the church, helping one another, like we've done a lot, particularly during the, the pandemic. Some people mistakenly think that putting off baptism until ch children are old enough to decide for themselves, that should be the way forward. Well, that's a fallacy. Children are hardly going to decide for Christ if their links with the church, which Christ founded, as I already said, are practically non-existent. How are they going to decide for Christ? 
Faith is not nourished in a vacuum. If in our ordinary life now, the children are introduced to wider members of their family, their uncles, the cousins, and whatever, then doesn't it sound natural that they're not cut away from their church family either, which they, ha they are entitled to be part of by virtue of their baptism. For the seeds of baptism then to grow, children need to feel part of a community of faith from the beginning. As Jesus said, let the little children, let the big children as well, come to me, do not stop them, he said, for it is to such as this, this, that the kingdom of God belongs. Have we put any obstacles in their way, I wonder, in this regard? We know now also that peer pressure can often cause secondary school pupils to abandon mass. Now that's another form of bullying which is rarely mentioned. We hear about phobias this and we have a phobia over that but never hear about mass phobia. Going to mass is a phobia. Would you never hear about that? In my experience, the happiest teenagers are not those who become slaves to social media, but those who belong to faith group, like for instance, Youth 2000. I've been involved in that years ago, and it was really a great experience. Or those who join the swell of young people making their way to Walsingham every year, thousands of them. And you can find out all about them, just Google them or else people going to things like celebrate that they really enjoy. The Bishop of Plymouth, who attended one of these weekends, said last year, I was struck, he said, by the joy and enthusiasm of so many young people in their faith. The present pandemic then might just be the wake-up call we all need, both young and old, to rejuvenate us in our faith and live out our baptism to the full or to the best of our ability.
On this feast of passion of our Lord, when Christ was revealed as his the beloved Son, we turn to God our Father, confident that he will hear and answer our prayer. On this feast of the baptism of the Lord, when Christ was revealed as the beloved Son, we turn to God our Father, confident that he will hear and answer our prayers. Lord, in your mercy. For the church, that all who have been baptised will be inspired by the Holy Spirit to give united witness to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who do not know yet Jesus as the beloved Son of God, that they may open their hearts and come to believe in the good news. Lord, in your mercy. For peace with justice throughout the world, that all people will turn from hatred to love and from violence to peace. Lord, in your mercy. For a true spirit of humanity in evangelization, that in our preaching, prayer and example, we may always point away from ourselves and towards the living Christ. Lord, in your mercy. For the sick, the lonely, the housebound and the vulnerable, that in the midst of their suffering, they will experience the loving arms of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. For the dead, especially Peter Cloney, who died recently, and those whose anniversaries occur about this time. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <coughs> A 
accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honour the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us, and by the Spirit descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know the Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth. Before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <clears throat> deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let's share one another that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Behold the one of whom John said, I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. the body of Christ.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. There is no Mass here on Tuesday, but there is one tomorrow at 9.30. Your January day-by-day -day booklets are still available at the back. There's a parish meeting on Tuesday at 7.30, and St. Justin meeting is tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. in the hall. And talking about the St. Vincent de Paul Society, if anyone in the parish would like assistance with anything, please ring Peter on that number shown there. Your prayers are requested of the happy repose of the soul of Peter Cloney, who died recently. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. <laughs> and may he rest in peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass has ended, go in peace. Amen.